so today we'll be starting with the tools and techniques of management accounting see uh, whenever we are talking about this management accounting management accounting as we discussed in the last class you know it's not going to provide you any straightforward solutions right so for that matter what we need to do we need certain uh, tools or you can say we need certain uh, techniques with the help of which we'll be able to further solve our problem and we'll be able to analyze and take certain decisions right so basically this when we talk about management accounting management accounting is providing you with the accounting service to the management and how do they provide uh, that is through their various functions and for that matter when they uh, apply their functions they need to employ a number of tools and techniques or what we call as methods also but when we are talking about these tools and techniques it's not that just one technique will serve your purpose for each and everything right so for that matter you need a number of uh, tools and techniques and over a period of time we have observed that there are new uh, tools that have been developed which have either replaced the older ones or they are just an addition to the new one so that we can take the required actions or required decisions as and when required. So the basic tools and techniques of management accounting are, the first one is financial planning. Now, when we talk about financial planning, in case of financial planning, we determine the both long-term and short-term financial objectives of the firm. Right. And when we determine the uh, long term and short term financial objectives, then we also formulate the financial procedures because just laying the objectives is not sufficient. Once you lay the objectives, you also need to know how these uh, objectives are to be achieved. And for that matter, we need certain financial procedures. Right. Along with that, we also need to determine the capital structure, which is one of the most important aspect of financial planning. Because until and unless you have the required capital, until and unless you have the required finance with you, you will not be in a position to move ahead with the decision or move ahead with achieving the organizational goal. So for that matter, the manager has to determine, first of all, what exactly is the financial requirement? Then once you are done with the actual amount that is required, then you have to see that uh, how you will raise these funds. Right. So when you are talking about raising of the funds, it can be either long term or short term funds. Long term and short term means I'm talking about the borrowed capital or what we call it as debt. Right. Then that, uh, that debt could be secured or unsecured. Or it, it could be in the form of preference shares or in the form of equity shares. So there has to be a proper ratio between overall debt and equity, which is known as your optimum capital structure, right? So this management accounting, it also provides the capital budgeting techniques for financial planning because until and unless you are clear with your uh, financial structure, you will not be able to move ahead with the project or with the organizational goals. Next is your analysis of financial statements. See, we all know that, you know, in books of accounts, we prepare the uh, balance sheet and the statement of PL or what we call it as PL account. But they are just heaps of numbers or heaps of figures, what we call it. So the actual logic is that you need to prepare these statements. And once you prepare them, then you need to analyze them. So when you need to analyze them, that analysis can be done in various forms, like in the form of common size statements, comparative statements, ratio analysis, funds flow analysis, cash flow analysis, and various others, right? So basically, whatever financial statements you are preparing in your financial accounting, they act as a base or these statements are used to further analyze the situation and plan for the upcoming future, which becomes a part of your management accounting. Then we have historical cost accounting. Now, see, when you are talking about the actual cost that you have incurred, that becomes a part of historical cost accounting because whatever cost you have incurred, 
you are just calculating that. That is known as historical cost, right? So in this case, then the actual cost is compared to the standard cost, which will give you an idea about the performance of the business. That means where you stand. Because if you are calculating your cost, say for example, it should be 120, but your cost is one, uh, uh, suppose, say for example, 150. So until and unless you make a comparison, you will never come to know whether your cost is more or uh, it is less. But when you make a comparison, then you will come uh, to know that, okay, you know, we are incurring more cost. So that will give you an idea that, okay, we need to take certain corrective actions. So that is the process that you have already done something so based on that, what corrective actions should be taken? Next is your budgetary control. Budgetary control means that you want to control the cost of your product uh, with the help of budgets. For that matter, we prepare different types of budgets, uh, budgets in the organization. Then again, the actual uh, performance is compared with the budgeted figures and it will help you in fixing the responsibilities of various individuals who will be held responsible for their particular piece of work, right? So even these budgets are used as tool for planning and further control. Then we have standard costing. Now see, standard costing is very, very significant for cost control. Now under the standard costing, what we do is, first of all, we determine the cost as, okay, you know, this is the standard cost, what the cost should be the most ideal situation. Then your actual, that means your actual working of the cost is compared with the standards. Then we locate the uh, variances and then these variances are is analyzed because until and unless you know there is a variance, until and unless you know the root cause of the variance, you will not be able to rectify it, right? So in this case, first of all, you look for the deviation. Then once the deviation is noted, then you try to look for the root cause of the deviation. Once you are familiar with the root cause, then you can actually move ahead for taking the corrective action. Because in this case, you have to uh, set up a cause and effect relationship so that you can increase the efficiency. You can uh, move back to your correct path. Right Now, when we are talking about this, uh, standard costing. The standard costing is usually used along with budgetary control for an effective control operation so that both the things can go simultaneously. Next we have is the marginal costing. Now when we are talking about marginal costing, it means the ascertaining of the marginal cost and its effect on the profit because what happens is, uh, see if you already have a set uh, plant, if you have already a set sales level, then marginal cost comes into picture when you need to produce something extra. Right? So, whenever you are producing something extra, so what will be the additional cost of producing that extra unit or the uh, extra number of units? There, is the, there might be a possibility that you don't have to incur any fixed cost. Uh, here, the entire cost is categorized into fixed cost and variable cost. Fixed cost, which will not change with the changing levels of output, right? But the variable cost, like I'm talking about your, uh, you know, your building, your machinery, and all. suppose all these things are already uh, there with you. You don't need any extra units uh, for all these. And for that matter, what you do is you further uh, just have to incur the additional variable cost for manufacturing the additional units. So in that case, what will be the uh, cost of producing those extra units that is considered as your marginal cost, right? And uh, whenever we talk about this concept of marginal cost, this technique is highly useful uh, when uh, you have to take certain decisions related to price fixation, profit planning, sales mix, make or buy components, etc. Then we have other types of tools and techniques like we have the decision accounting. Right. Uh, in case of decision making, uh, what happens is decisions could be related to various, you can say, topics like it can be a capital expenditure, it can be a make or buy decision, it can be what price to be charged or it can be related to other matters. 
right? So in this case, whenever you have to take a decision, it is not only considering the quantitative data, but the non-quantitative data or what we call it as non-financial data is also to be taken into account. Then we have revaluation accounting. See, revaluation accounting comes into picture when you want to revalue uh, your uh, assets and liabilities in the business. Say, for example, I bought a building uh, at the rate of 1 lakh 20 years back. So, and uh, today maybe its price is 1 crore. One crore. So, in that case, we are, you know, from time to time, we need to revalue the uh, price of the uh, assets that we already own. Right. So as a result, we even call it as replacement or price level accounting. So uh, this particular technique will help you to combat the effects of inflation uh, that we have on accounting values. Right. So as a result, what will happen? That instead of just considering your historical cost values, we will be able to account it uh, for in terms of the present values. So it will help us in keeping the capital of the company intact. Next, we have the control accounting. See, control accounting when we talk about is not a separate accounting system because it consists of techniques uh, associated with standard costing, budgetary control, control reports and statements, internal check, internal audit and statutory audit and organization and methods. Basically, what happens is that whenever we are talking about working in the organization, it's not that just planning is important because in case of management accounting, what we are doing is planning, right? But if we plan and if we do not control, then your planning is a waste. So to keep that planning intact and to keep that planning uh, fruitful, we need to have control on it. So for that control, we need different uh, techniques like standard costing, budgetary controls, uh, control reports and statements, or maybe internal audit and various other techniques. Then next we have is the funds flow statement or we, what we call it as funds flow analysis. In this case, what we do is uh, we try to find out the movement of funds from one period to another. And uh, when we are talking about the movement of funds here, that means we are more bothered for the working capital changes and the overall funds that change from one form to another. So the basic objective of uh, going for funds flow analysis is to study the sources and applications of funds. When I use the word sources, that means from what all sources, from what all, uh, ways uh, funds will be generated, we will be getting the funds and application means that in what all uh, ways we need to make the payment of the funds. Because what all sources we generate the funds, they help us in uh, moving ahead in the business because you need to conduct your business with the help of funds only. And uh, when you are conducting your business, it's not that just you will be getting the funds in the form of uh, sources. You will also have to make certain payments. And for those payments, you also need to see that whenever you need to make a payment, you have the required amount of funds available with you. The next one is cash flow analysis. Cash flow analysis is similar to a funds flow analysis with the only difference that in case of funds flow, it was a broader uh, concept because we were studying the overall funds over here. Whereas in case of cash flow, we are studying just one component of the overall funds that is cash. So here we are studying the inflows and outflows of cash only. So that means from what all uh, places we will be getting cash, that means receipt of cash and uh, in what all uh, things we need to pay the cash that is known as the outflow of cash. Then we have even statistical techniques. There are a lot and lot many statistical techniques that are used in solving the management problems. Uh, like we use the least square regression, quality control, etc. Because ultimately, whatever information is required by the management accounting people for taking the decision, they do not need it the way they are presented in the financial accounting. They need it in the form of charts, uh, maybe graphs, or in some uh, way in which statistical techniques are required. So that will help them in just uh, making the figures more simpler and easy to remember. And uh, it will further help them to take the decision in a more radical way. The next one is management reporting. Uh, in case of management reporting, continuous reports are to be prepared. So in this case, the management accounting, he keeps on preparing the reports on the basis of the contents of profit and loss account 
and balance sheet and even the uh, work reports of the people working in the organization. And uh, then he keeps on submitting it to the uh, people and uh, to the top management. And uh, these reports, they disclose the strengths and weaknesses in different areas of operating activities and financial activities. And at the same time, like uh, how far are we from achieving the organizational objective? So that based on which the uh, organizational people can take the relevant decision and actually come to know where do we stand. Then we also have cost accounting. In case of cost accounting, uh, we want to know the cost related data and that data should be product wise, process wise, department wise, branch wise and depending upon the uh, requirement. Right. So this cost related data is then compared to the predetermined data and uh, this comparison of the two costs will help the management to decide the reasons for the possible between the two so that they can take a corrective measure. And the last uh, statistical technique, uh, sorry, not statistical, the uh, tool and technique of management accounting is your ratio analysis, which is a very, very important uh, uh, you can say technique and which is actually done by every organization because the, uh, whenever we are talking about ratio analysis, we are trying to establish a mathematical relationship between given two variables. Those two variables could be either from your balance sheet or from your uh, PNL account or maybe one from the balance sheet and one from the PNL account. Right. So it will help us in analyzing, in forecasting, in planning, in coordinating, in, and communicating and controlling the overall activities of the organization. And it gives us a way for effective control of business operations by undertaking an appraisal of both the physical and monetary targets. Because until and unless you do this ratio analysis, you will not come to know what are your uh, strengths, your weakness, your opportunities, your threats where what your competitor is doing how far are you from your competitor and uh, what exactly is your situation with respect to the previous year right so all these things are actually required for your uh, further growth and planning uh, any doubt anyone in this uh, tools and techniques Okay, so in that case, uh, we can start with the next one. The next chapter is cost volume profit analysis. Now, see, when we are talking about this cost volume profit analysis, first of all, try to understand that this is again a technique of uh, managerial accounting, which is known as CVP analysis, right? And here, what exactly are we trying to study? We are trying to study the effect of sales volume and product cost on the profit of the organization. Because you know that here we are talking about three terms, cost, volume, and profit. So we are studying the effect of this cost and volume on the profit of the organization. Right? So whenever we are talking about this particular concept, and it is dealing with how operating profit is going to be affected by the changes that are happening in variable cost, fixed cost, selling price, and the sales mix of two or more different products, right? So with this concept, the uh, organizations, they can actually understand the overall performance of the organization by looking at how many units must be sold to break even. So the, I mean, the basic concept here that we are going to study is the break even uh, analysis. Right. And uh, so that uh, or uh, like either you want to know your break even point or if not break even point, because if you have already crossed your break even point, then certainly you are not bothered for that. So in that case, you want to know a particular level of profit that you want to achieve. Right. Or you want to know your margin of safety, like how much safety you have uh, within your operations. Right. So as a result, we can say we have the CVP analysis helps in analyzing the effects of changes in the selling price or sales volume or sales mix or fixed cost on the profit of the firm. 
So whenever we are talking about the CVP analysis, it will examine the interaction of the firm sales volume, selling price, cost structure and profitability. And it helps us in taking certain decisions. Now the question arises, what exact decisions it can take? Like how many units of its products must be, must a firm sell to break even? That means they want to know their break even point. How many units of its products must a firm sell to earn a particular amount of profit? That means you have a target profit in mind and uh, how, uh, how many units are required for that. Then, should a firm invest in highly automated machinery and reduce its labor force? Or should a firm advertise more to improve its sales? Right, so whenever we are talking, see, whatever may be the decision, but in case of CVP analysis, we will be con uh, concentrating only on three uh, concepts, that is cost, volume, and profit, right? And this analysis, it will give you a relationship that is existing between the cost, revenue, activity level, and the resulting profit out of all these things, right? Now, whenever I'm uh, using the CVP analysis, now the question is, is what exactly is its usage? First of all, or you can say uh, where exactly you can use it. See, as far as the usage is concerned, you can use it to calculate your product price or maybe accepting and rejecting the sales order. Uh, maybe what uh, product lines to promote, what level of output is required to achieve a set level of net profit, feasibility of a profit plan and technology usage. Now, when we are talking about this CVP analysis, we have two concepts here. One is either we use the profit volume ratio, which is known as the PV ratio, or what we call it as contribution margin analysis. And the other one is break-even analysis. We'll be doing both of them. But before we move ahead with the CVP analysis, we have certain assumptions. See, whenever you are studying something, certain things are to be assumed or they are to be kept constant. Similarly, when we are talking about CVP analysis, first of all, your cost, whatever is your cost, you have to categorize it either as variable or fixed, right? Secondly, your sales price per unit. Variable cost per unit and total fixed cost, they are constant because if they keep on changing, so you will never be able to. Because in that case, see, if I talk about the long run, in long run, everything is variable, right? And if I do not assume, like if suppose I'm concentrating on one thing, that means I want to take a decision related to one thing. So I need to study the others also. But if I study, if I keep on studying each and every factor, then each uh, every factor is changing. So I need to assume that right now everything else is constant. So I need to take a decision on one thing, right? Then all the units that you're going to produce can be sold. And whatever is your sales during a particular given time period, that should be known to you. That means, okay, you know that uh, these are the number of units that you will be able to sell. And if in case your uh, organization is a multi-product uh, organization, that means you deal in more than one product, then your sales mix should be constant. That means how many units of which product you are selling, that mix is constant and that is known to you. And if in case you are in a manufacturing company, then your inventories, that means the raw material or the whatever product uh, that you are talking about, that uh, remains unchanged, right? So the basic objectives of your, of your CVP analysis is that you need to understand the interaction among the prices of products, the volume or level of activity, per unit variable cost, total fixed cost, and mixed of product sold. Now, I move on to the break-even analysis because once you do the practical part, then things will be more clear to you. When I talk about this break-even analysis, in simple words, it is a point where total cost is equal to total revenue. Or simply, I can say it is a point where the organization is neither earning any profit nor suffering any loss. is a point i repeat it is a point where the organization is not earning any profit and it is not even earning any loss right
So whenever we are talking about BEP, at this BEP, do remember your contribution is equal to fixed cost. Now, these are something uh, new for you people, contribution uh, and all these things. But right now, you just remember that it is a point where there is no profit, no loss, or when we call it as total cost is equal to total revenue. Because the moment we'll do the uh, next concept, that is the equation method, then it will be more clear, right? Now, whenever uh, I'm talking about the starting of the business, if I am a new entrant in the market, my first objective is to reach this break-even point because at least I want to reach a point where I'm not suffering losses, right? So because beyond this point, every additional uh, unit that I'm going to sell will result in giving me profits and it will increase my profit day by day. But right now in the beginning, my objective is to reach this break-even point. Right. And when I'm talking about this break even, uh, this break even analysis can be approached in two ways. That is one with the equation method and the other one is the contribution or uh, sorry, contribution margin method or what we call it as PV ratio method. Now, first, uh, let's try to understand it graphically. If this X axis gives me the number of units sold and Y axis gives me the revenue. Right. Now, just have a look. See. My, this is my fixed cost. Fixed cost is not going to change. Right? But if I talk about my variable cost, right? My variable cost keeps on changing and with the uh, variable cost, even my total cost will keep on changing. So, if this is my fixed cost, so my total cost will be certainly above this. So, this curve is my total cost. Yeah, even when I'm incurring cost, there can be a possibility I'm not selling any unit. So my sales start from zero. So this is my sales, total sales. Now the point where my total sales is bisecting or you can say intersect, not bisecting, I'll use the term intersecting the total cost curve. This is the point where my sales and cost are equal. If my sales and cost are equal, so that means this is my break-even point, right? Anything beyond, I mean, anything left to this, just have a look at this area. My cost is, this is my total cost curve. This is my sales curve. My cost is above the sales. So if my cost is more than my sales, so that means I am incurring losses. So this entire orangish area is my loss. Right now, the moment I cross this point, this break even point, you can see my sales is above the cost. So that means if my sales is above the cost, so that means I am earning profits now. So this entire area is this gray part is my profit. Right now, there is another concept that is known as margin of safety. Now, Anything which is beyond the break-even point and my actual sales, whatever is the level of my actual sales, that is known as my margin of safety. My, if my present sales is this much, then my margin of safety will be this much. If my present sales is at this point, so my margin of safety will be this much. Right now, my present sales are this much, so my margin of safety is this much. This is how we present it or understand the break-even point graphically. Right now, if we study this same uh, break even point with the help of the equation method, now see you know that profit is equal to sales minus the cost, right? But if I bifurcate that cost into variable and fixed, right? Because if I'm talking about my cost, my cost is inclusive of my variable cost as well as my fixed cost. So I just write it as sales minus variable cost minus fixed cost, right? So now if I just take these two items, that is sales minus variable, uh, variable expenses or variable cost. This is nothing but which is known as contribution. Because whenever I am talking about taking a decision, or I'm talking about this break-even contribution plays a major role. How it plays, I'll let you. 
right now you know sales is equal to variable expenses plus fixed expenses that is the cost plus profits and at break even point i told you there is no profit so that means the profit is equal to zero at break even point so i can say that this equation can be written like this sales is variable expenses plus fixed expenses plus profit so i have taken a hypothetical example where i say uh, sales is equal to 16q now what is q q is the number of chocolates sold so that means i'm talking about a business selling chocolates right variable expenses are 12q again 12 into number of chocolates sold 12 is the unit variable expense fixed expenses which are constant i have taken it as 40000 right and profits as i told you is zero at this level right now if i further try to solve this i write sales equal to x is equal to variable expenses 0.75x now the question arises how i have got this particular figure just have a look at the previous one my sales was 16 here q and q are same number of units are same over here my sales was uh, 16 so my variable expenses were 12 so that makes it to 75 percent of the sales price so i've taken the same thing over here if my sales are x so my variable expenses are 0.75 x plus fixed expenses same 40,000 and profits as i told you uh, it's zero at the break even point right further solving this equation i get the value of x as 160000 so that is my sales value right so this is how you calculate rupees 160000 if you want to calculate it in uh, rupees you can calculate it in rupees if you want to calculate it in uh, number of units you can calculate it in number of units right now next we have it was the contribution margin see when we subtract the variable expenses from the sales or from the revenue whatever figure we get is known as contribution right so that means the contribution margin is telling you about how much the company's revenue will be contributing towards covering the fixed cost now, why uh, covering the fixed cost? Because as I told you, you already have a setup for your fixed cost. You already have a uh, building. You already have a uh, plant. You already have your machine. So, you do not have to incur any extra fixed cost. So, whatever, whether you produce any unit or not, this fixed cost is already incurred. You are not going to change it, right? So, for that matter, the, we try to take the decision based only on your variable cost. Right. So as a result, it says that you keep your fixed cost aside because they are already incurred. You can't change it now. So whatever is your decision, that decision should be based on your uh, variable cost. So we just consider sales minus the variable cost. Right. So whatever extra you get after covering your variable cost, that is known as your contribution, which will be covering your fixed cost. And if it is beyond your fixed cost, then it will give you a level of profit. Right. So that is your contribution. So you can here see that contribution. Uh, whenever we are talking about this contribution, as I told you, it is the difference between the selling price and the variable cost. And it will contribute towards covering your fixed cost, number one. And even after fixed cost, uh, if something is left, then it will cover your, I mean, it will give you profits. Right. So whenever we have to calculate the BEP in units, the formula is fixed cost upon contribution margin per unit. All right. This is the formula when we are calculating or when we want to know the BEP in units. All right. Where uh, your selling price per unit minus your variable cost per unit will give you the contribution per unit. Right. Or I can say fixed cost plus profit is equal to contribution. Fine. So, your contribution uh, ratio is contribution per unit upon selling price per unit. Now, just have a look. This will give you a better understanding. See, profit is equal to sales minus total cost, right? 
I segregate this total cost into total variable cost and total fixed cost. Fine. Now, after this equation, after this number two, just have a look. I can say contribution margin is equal to total revenue, that is total sales, minus total variable cost. Here I'm talking about only this portion. Right? This is equal to contribution margin. Now, how do we present it when we need to take decisions? Remember this portion. If you remember this, you will never make a mistake. You start with your sales. You subtract your variable cost. What you get is known as your contribution. Right? From this contribution, you subtract your fixed cost. If anything positive remains, that is your profit. Simple. Now, if I talk about this, con uh, continue with the contribution margin method, uh, we have certain equations. If we want to calculate the BEP in units, I told you it is fixed expenses upon unit contribution margin. Yeah, that is per unit contribution margin, right? But if you want to calculate the same break-even point in rupee value, that means in sales uh, value, then whatever I calculate over here, that is the units multiplied by the sale price then I can get it, right? Or if I want to calculate it with the help of a formula, then same thing, the fixed expenses upon the CM ratio, that is the contribution margin ratio. So I either use my per unit contribution or I use my contribution margin ratio. Both will give me the same answer. Depending upon, I want to calculate it in number of units sold or I want to calculate it in rupee value, right? Now, whenever I'm talking about this, uh, I'm continuously uh, talking about this contribution margin ratio, which is also known by the name of PV ratio or what we call it as profit volume ratio, right? So, uh, the ratio for calculating this uh, CM ratio or the P, uh, PV ratio is contribution upon sales into 100. So, basically, uh, when I'm using the term contribution margin ratio, that means I want to know the percentage of contribution with respect to sales. So it is contribution upon sales into 100. Now the question arises, why do we use this PV ratio? What is the basic utility of it? It helps us in determining the marginal cost for any volume of sales. When I use the term marginal cost, that means I'm talking about variable cost only. Right? Secondly, it also helps in calculating the desired volume of output that is required for earning a particular level of profit, right? Thirdly, it helps us in making the comparisons by calculating the PV ratio for each of the factors to be compared, like li what line of product you want to be in, your sales area, method of sales, individual factories, separate companies, etc. Right? So, as I told you, uh, the break-even point in total rupee sales is uh, fixed expenses upon CM ratio. And if I continue with my previous examples of chocolates, my fixed expenses were 40% and my CM ratio was 25%. 25% if you calculate it from the figures given over there because that was contribution upon sales into 100. So that was 25. So I get the overall uh, break-even sales value as rupees 160,000. And suppose... This is, I'm talking about the break-even point right now. Suppose, apart now, once I reach the break-even point, now I, I have a target profit in mind. That means I want to achieve a particular level of profit. So, in that case, what to do? In that case, what you can do is, so, uh, okay, you can just go through the example. Like, I've just created a change over here. Uh, suppose the company wants to know how many units must be sold to earn a profit of 50,000. So this 50,000 becomes my target profit, right? Now, I continue with my same equation, which I initially started with, where my sales were 16Q, variable expenses 12Q, fixed expenses were 40,000. But at that point of time, my profit was zero because I was talking about break-even uh, break point at that point of time. Now, my profit is 50,000 because that's my target profit. I can't say my profit has to be zero. So, when I solve this equation, I get the value of Q as 22,500 units. 
So that means to earn a target profit of 50,000, I need to sell the number of units as 22,500, right? So I can derive this formula as, see, uh, uh, right now, till now, whatever we were doing, we were just supposed to recover the fixed cost because we were talking about break-even point, point where there was no profit, no loss, right? I was able to cover my variable cost. After covering my variable cost, my only objective was to cover my fixed cost. So my numerator only had my fixed cost. But now, apart from my uh, fixed cost, I have a target profit also. So I add that target profit also here, right, in the form of desired profit divided by PV ratio. Or you can say your CM ratio, that is contribution margin ratio, right? So I just move ahead with the same thing. Fixed expenses were 40,000, target profit 50,000 and con unit contribution margin is 4 per unit. So I get the same number of units, that is 22,500 units. So you can solve it either way, you get the same answer, right? Now we have another, uh, another concept that is known as the margin of safety. The margin of safety is the excess of actual sales over the break-even sales. If I do not use the word actual, I can use the budgeted if suppose I'm planning for the upcoming future. So that means whatever uh, extra I am selling apart from my break-even sales, that is my margin of safety. So I can simply write my margin of safety as total sales minus the break-even sales or I can uh, also write it as profit upon PV ratio. Both the things are one and the same thing, right? If you just keep on expanding this also, you will get this all. Right, so this margin of safety can be presented in different uh, ways or you can say different formulas. Like I can write it as actual sales minus the break-even sales if I'm already operating a point beyond the break-even sales, right? I can, if I want to calculate this margin of safety in rupee value, I can calculate it as profit upon PV ratio. And if I want to calculate it in units, I can write it as profit upon contribution per unit. The same formula in rupee value, if I want to calculate it, then it is PV ratio. And if it is in uh, units, then it is contribution per unit. And if I want to calculate this margin of safety ratio, as I told you, when we were presenting contribution margin ratio, we were saying it is a percentage uh, of uh, contribution to sales. Similarly, here also margin of safety uh, sales will be a percentage from its actual sales. So margin of safety sales upon actual sales into 100. Right now, uh, this is a proper full fledged uh, question uh, that will help you know how exactly things are to be analyzed. Connex Limited sells one product, uh, Super Cream, a cream suitable for a variety of first aid users. The company commenced operations earlier this year and expects to sell one lakh tubes of Super Cream. The following information is available. Selling price per tube is 7, direct material cost per tube 2.10, direct labor cost per tube 1.35, variable overhead per tube 0 0.75, total fixed cost of, uh, for the year is 2,10,000. CVP analysis may provide answers to the following questions. For Connex Limited, what is the break-even point in tubes, units and sales revenue? Then, if the company wanted to earn a profit of 46,200 for the year, how many tubes of super cream must be sold? Thirdly, by how much could expected sales revenue fall before Connex Limited starts to make a loss? The first part of the question is actually talking to you about the break-even point in units and in uh, sales value. The second part of the question is talking about a target profit. And the third part of the question is talking about the margin of safety. I start with the initial calculation. See, in such questions, whenever CVP analysis is involved, you should always start with sales minus variable cost to calculate the contribution. Once you calculate the contribution, automatically things will be clear how to proceed with it. I start with the sales, which is given to me as 7 here. Then my total variable cost, if I just repeat the uh, previous slide, that is direct material, direct labor, and va uh, variable overhead. All these three things are my variable costs. 
right? So I just add it over here. So that makes it to my total, uh, I mean, all these three things are my variable cost. So my total variable cost comes out to 4.20, right? So sales minus the variable cost, that gives me the contribution that is 2.80. Fine. Now, once my contribution is calculated, now I can calculate my BEP in units. That is total fixed cost. 2,10,000 upon contribution per tube, that is 2.80 that we have calculated. So my BEP in units is 75,000 tubes, the first part of the question. Now, if I want to calculate the second part of the same thing, that means in rupee value, I can simply write it as 75,000 tubes at the rate of se uh, selling price of 7. So that will make it to 5,25,000 or if I want to calculate it through uh, the help uh, with the help of the uh, formula, then it is total fixed cost uh, upon contribution margin ratio, right? For that matter, I need the contribution margin ratio. Contribution margin ratio is contribution that is 2.80 upon sales into 100. So I get it as 40%. So my BEP in sales uh, value will be 2,10,000 right upon 40 percent into 100 so that again gives me the same answer so either way you can calculate it now in the second part of the question they have given you a target profit and that target profit is of 46,200 so in the uh, formula to uh, total fixed cost plus target profit total fixed cost was 2,10,000 target profit 46,200 upon contribution per unit that is 2.80. Uh, so I get my answer as 91,500 tubes. So that means the uh, given organization should sell 91,500 tubes of super cream to make a profit of 46,200 for the year. Now third, uh, if I move on to the third part of the question, just have a look at it again. By how much could expected sales revenue fall before Connex Limited starts to make a loss? So rather than simply asking their margin of safety, uh, in simple words, they have asked you that how much could the expected sales revenue fall so that they start making a loss. So for that matter, no matter, they are asking you the same thing that is uh, margin of safety only. So my uh, expected or you can say current sales is 1 lakh units at the rate of 7, that is 7 lakhs. And my BEP sales, I have calculated it as 5,25,000. So my margin of safety is 1,75,000. So that means the sales revenue can fall by 1,75,000 before the company starts making losses. And uh, all the decision making that uh, uses CVP analysis, uh, based on which we can further make the decisions related to make or buy, accepting a special order and all, that we will be covering in the next class.